14. Window into Hell In September 2014, explorers and documentarians George Kuronis and Sam Cosman embarked on a daring and intense adventure into the Marum Crater. Located in an active volcano in the Vanuatu Archipelago in the South Pacific, the duo, accompanied by guides Jeff Mackley and Brad Ambrose, spent four days on the volcano, descending twice into the crater, which plunged a staggering 1,200 feet or 366 meters, equivalent to the height of the Empire State Building. Describing the experience as a window into hell, Kuronis stood at the edge of a red-hot lava lake, with molten rock bubbling just feet away and caustic acid rain splashing on his protective suit. Kuronis, known for documenting extreme forces of nature, claimed that the journey into Marum was one of the most intense experiences of his life. The expedition presented numerous challenges, resembling a reverse climbing of Everest, the team faced the volcano's resistance, battling terrible weather, intense heat from the lava, and navigating a near-vertical, loose rock face during the descent and ascent. The acid rain was so potent that it could have been compared to that of a car battery. Kuronis emphasized the perilous proximity to the lava, recounting instances where splashes melted a hole into his rain jacket and damaged one of his cameras. He highlighted a particularly dangerous moment captured in the video, where he stood as a small silver dot next to what looked like a lava waterfall. The potential for catastrophe loomed, given the rapid and catastrophic nature of any mishap. Kosman shared that despite the terrifying aspects, the adrenaline rush overshadowed the fear when dangling above the unimaginable sight of a glowing, fiery pit, likened only to the surface of the sun at close range. He described the experience as the pinnacle adventure of his life. In the face of extreme conditions, both Coronis and Kosman reflected on the expedition as an amazing and unparalleled adventure. The documentary captured breathtaking footage of their journey into the heart of the active volcano, showcasing the fearless pursuit of exploration and the awe-inspiring power of nature. 13. Boiled Alive A tragic incident unfolded near Naples, Italy in September of 2017 at the Solfatara Crater, claiming the lives of 11-year-old Lorenzo his 42-year-old mother, Tiziania Zarmella, and 45-year-old father, Massimiliano Carrer. The heartbreaking accident occurred when Lorenzo slipped into the volcanic crater, prompting his parents to attempt a rescue that ultimately led to their own demise. The 1,832 degree Fahrenheit, or 1,000 degrees Celsius mud, within the crater proved fatal, as the parents, originally from Turin in northern Italy, were boiled alive while attempting to save their son. Lorenzo had crossed a safety barrier before falling into the crater, and his parents, in a desperate effort, were tragically sucked into the five-foot-deep, 1.5-meter deadly mud while trying to pull him to safety. An additional seven-year-old boy, believed to be another son of the victims, managed to scramble to safety, escaping the harrowing fate that befell his family. Horrific images from the scene depicted the family in body bags carried away by ambulances. Diego Vitaliano, an eyewitness, shared the heart-wrenching moment when a crying child ran from the scene, highlighting the unsuspecting tragedy that unfolded. Visitors including Vitaliano, became aware of the incident and approached the crater, witnessing the retrieval of the two bodies before being ushered away. The emotional impact of the distressed family, particularly the cries of the surviving child, left a lasting impression on those present that day. The Solfatara of Pozzuoli, part of the volcanic landscape west of Naples, is a popular tourist destination known for its association with the Roman god Vulcan. Although considered dormant since its last eruption in 1198, 
the site still emits sulfurous fumes and steam from its depths. The unfortunate incident reminds us of the potential dangers posed by seemingly dormant volcanic landscapes, emphasizing the importance of adhering to safety measures and barriers in such environments. 12. Waking the Beast In August 2022, a fascinating and somewhat daring experiment took place at the Urta Ale volcano in Ethiopia where researchers sought to understand the consequences of a person falling into lava from a great height. Captured in incredible footage, two individuals stood at the edge of the volcanic pit, and one threw a 66-pound, 30-kilogram box filled with organic waste into the crater. The impact of the object created a hole in the lava crust, immediately leading to flames and spurts of molten lava. What started as a small disturbance rapidly escalated, causing the volcano to awaken, with the once silent surface transforming into a roiling pond of molten turbulence. The researchers aimed to simulate what would happen if a person fell into a volcano from a significant height, considering factors like the impact, floating potential due to lava density, and the resulting volcanic activity. The experiment revealed that a person falling into lava would likely float rather than sink due to the lava's density. The choice of using a box with organic waste emphasized the researchers' interest in understanding the potential steam production and violent expulsion of lava, resulting from the introduction of organic matter into the volcano. While the experiment sheds light on scientific aspects, it also serves as a reminder of the dangers associated with volcanic activity. The footage demonstrated the immediate and dramatic consequences of disturbing the surface of a volcano, shedding light on the potential for destruction and the force of nature unleashed. The researchers, mindful of safety concerns and ethical considerations, opted for a controlled experiment using a non-human subject. They stressed the importance of avoiding risky behavior around volcanoes, as even seemingly dormant ones can pose dangers and awakening them could lead to catastrophic consequences for the surrounding areas. 11. Kilauea Caldera A 32-year-old soldier faced a harrowing ordeal in May of 2019 at Hawaii's Kilauea Caldera, sustaining serious injuries after falling from a 300-foot-high or 91.4-meter cliff into the volcano crater. The soldier, stationed at Schofield Barracks on Oahu, was on Hawaii's Big Island for training exercises when the incident occurred. Seeking a better view inside the volcano, the soldier climbed over a metal guardrail, only to have the ground beneath him collapse. An eyewitness immediately alerted authorities upon witnessing the fall at around 6.30 p.m. And in response, rescue workers descended into the volcano by rappelling locating the injured man on a ledge 70 feet, 21.3 meters below the rim. Employing a military helicopter, they airlifted him out of the crater, attaching him to a stretcher. The soldier was then flown to Hilo Medical Center in critical condition, but his status was later upgraded to stable. The chief ranger at Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, John Broward, emphasized the importance of adhering to safety barriers stating that crossing them could lead to serious injuries or death. Matthias Kush, battalion chief of the Hawaii County Fire Department, noted that the soldier was doing remarkably well for his fall, but the extent of his injuries would only become clear with time. Kilauea, renowned as one of the world's most active volcanoes, had erupted for months the previous year causing widespread destruction with lava and ash that destroyed approximately 700 homes on the island. The soldier's incident allows us a glimpse into the dangers associated with volcanic landscapes and the critical importance of respecting safety measures to prevent accidents and injuries from occurring. 10. Mount St. Helens and the Photojournalist In 1980, Reed Turner Blackburn, an American photographer, met a tragic end during the volcanic eruption of Mount St. Helens in Skamania County, Washington. 
Blackburn, a photojournalist covering the eruption for the Columbian, National Geographic, and the United States Geological Survey, was situated at Coldwater Camp, or 13 kilometers from the volcano, on the day of the catastrophe. His interest in Mount St. Helens had been peaked in March 1980, when earthquakes shook the volcano. Assigned to document its activity, Blackburn camped near the volcano, intending to capture images for various publications. But despite the original plan to stay until May 17th, he chose to extend his stay. On May 18th, an earthquake triggered a massive landslide, relieving pressure on the volcano's crater and causing a lateral eruption. Blackburn, positioned near Coldwater Creek, managed to trigger two remotely operated advanced Nikon cameras moments before a pyroclastic flow enveloped the area. Unfortunately, though, neither camera was found. Blackburn's car, surrounded by ash up to the windows, and his lifeless body was discovered four days later. The intense heat from the eruption had corrupted the negatives in his camera, making the film unsalvageable. The eruption of Mount St. Helens in 1980 was the deadliest and most destructive in U.S. history, claiming 57 lives, including Blackburn's. Described by friends and co-workers as talented and humorous, Blackburn's dedication to photography was evident in his final moments, doing what he loved. His widow, Faye, expressed that if Reed were alive, he would be back capturing the mountain's evolution, despite the risks. In Blackburn's memory, the National Press Photographers Association awards an annual scholarship worth $2,000. The Columbian also offered an internship in 2005 for applicants of the scholarship. Then, in a poignant discovery in 2013, a roll of undeveloped film containing pre-eruption shots of Mount St. Helens was found in Blackburn's archives, showcasing the landscape before the tragic event. 9. The Lucky Survivor In 1902, Ludger Silbaris became a remarkable survivor of the catastrophic eruption of Mount Pele on the Caribbean island of Martinique, which obliterated the city of Saint-Pierre, claiming an estimated 30,000 lives. Born on June 1, 1874, near the fishing village of Le Pressure, Silbaris worked as a laborer in St. Pierre, shadowed by the looming Mount Pele. On the night of May 7, 1902, just before the eruption, Silbaris found himself either in a bar fight or a street brawl, leading to his arrest for assault or, according to some accounts, possibly murder. Despite conflicting versions of the events, he was placed in solitary confinement in a bomb-proof underground cell with stone walls, lacking windows and ventilated only through a narrow grating facing away from the volcano. This cell, the most sheltered in the city, ultimately saved his life. At 7.52 a.m. on May 8th, Mount Pele erupted unleashing a devastating pyroclastic flow that destroyed St. Pierre within a minute. The vertical cloud of superheated gases and debris, with temperatures exceeding 1,832 degrees Fahrenheit, or 1,000 degrees Celsius, covered about 13 miles, 21 kilometers, erasing almost the entire population and flattening the city's infrastructure. But Silbaris, confined in his bomb-proof cell, survived the cataclysm. And despite suffering severe burns, he managed to avoid breathing the scorching air. Four days after the eruption, rescue workers heard his cries from the prison rubble. He was then pardoned for his crimes, and Silbaris went on to join the Barnum & Bailey Circus, touring America and sharing his first-hand account of the eruption. Advertised as the man who lived through doomsday, or the most marvelous man in the world, he became the first black man to star in Barnum & Bailey's segregated show. A replica of his cell was even featured in the circus. Ludger Silbaris died of natural causes in 1929, leaving behind a legacy as a survivor of one of the deadliest volcanic eruptions in history later becoming an unexpected sensation in the circus world. 
8. Clay and Akami Chastain An Indiana couple, Clay and Akami Chastain, experienced a harrowing accident during their honeymoon on the Caribbean island of St. Kitts in July of 2019. The incident took place when the couple hiked 2 miles, or 3.2 kilometers, up Mount Liamuiga, a dormant volcano. And upon reaching the summit, Clay decided to climb down for a closer look at the greenery inside the crater. Descending almost vertically, Clay held on to a rope, but suddenly a loud noise echoed, and he believed that the rope had snapped. Akami, waiting at the top, heard the commotion and began climbing down to reach him. When she found Clay, he was bleeding from the back of his head and vomiting. But despite the challenging situation, Akami encouraged Clay, stating that they needed to be strong and would have to climb out of the crater. With no cell service, Clay managed to climb out of the crater and Akami assisted him in walking the two miles 3.2 kilometers back to the base of the volcano. Akami's determination and encouragement played a crucial role in their escape. Despite Clay's severe concussion, cracked vertebrae, a skull fracture, and loss of hearing in his right ear, Akami managed to get him down the volcano, describing the experience as nothing short of a miracle. Due to the severity of Clay's injuries, though, including air entering his brain tissue. Commercial flight was not an option. So, Akemi's sister initiated a GoFundMe campaign to raise funds for an air ambulance to transport the couple back home. And thankfully, the campaign successfully garnered over $30,000, facilitating the air ambulance service for Clay and Akemi's return home after a traumatic and challenging honeymoon experience. 7. Mountain of God An extraordinary incident occurred in 2007 at Old Doño Lengai, an active volcano in Tanzania involving a man who miraculously survived falling into the volcano. Aptly named Mountain of God in the local Maasai language, the volcano is known for its unusual and relatively cool lava, never exceeding 950 degrees Fahrenheit or 510 degrees Celsius. The event unfolded on August 21, 2007, as a group was exploring the volcano. A Maasai porter, whose name remains unknown, fell into a lava-filled crevice. And despite the severity of the situation, the porter managed to climb out of the lava himself displaying remarkable resilience. The accident set this falling into a volcano story apart from others, as the outcome was surprisingly positive. The key to the porter's survival lies in Old Doño Lengai's unique lava characteristics. Unlike the scorching, fast-flowing lava that's typical of many volcanoes, the lava of Old Doño Lengai remains exceptionally cool by volcanic standards. It never exceeds 950 degrees Fahrenheit, presenting a slower-moving, black, rolling, and viscous liquid. This distinctive lava allowed the man to stand a chance of survival. During the fall, the porter strategically placed his pack on the lava's surface and stood on it. This ingenious move helped him stay above the thick, slow-moving sludge, preventing him from sinking further into the lava. By leveraging the peculiar properties of Old Doño Lengai's lava, the man was able to climb out of the crevice, sustaining severe burns on his arms and legs, but ultimately surviving the astonishing ordeal. This incident stands out due to the combination of unique geological conditions and the individual's resourcefulness, leading to a survival story that defies the odds and highlights the diverse nature of volcanic encounters. 6. Breach of Safety The management company of White Island, where a volcanic eruption claimed the lives of 22 people, was found guilty of breaching health and safety law in a New Zealand court. White Island, also known as Wakari, witnessed a tragic eruption in 2019, primarily affecting tourists. The workplace regulator had charged 13 parties in November 2020, with six, including helicopter and boat tour operators, pleading guilty. 
However, charges against the other parties were dismissed, except for the management company. Wakari Management Limited, WML, responsible for managing the island on behalf of the owners, but not conducting the tours, was found guilty of one health and safety charge. District Court Judge Evangelos Thomas emphasized that WML, treating the volcano as a workplace, failed in its duty by not engaging necessary expertise such as volcanology and health and safety to assess the risks associated with tours. He also deemed it a major failure on their part. The court proceedings also revealed that WML and other entities, excluding in-flight charters, were slated to be sentenced in the following year. The potential maximum fine they faced was 1.5 million New Zealand dollars, or about 873,000 US dollars. Then, in 2023, Wakari management was found guilty of violating a safety law. It was discovered that the company failed to conduct necessary risk assessments and didn't engage with any experts to mitigate and assess the risks of allowing tourists to explore the active volcano. But it's unclear what consequences they face in the aftermath of the disaster. Other parties that were involved also pleaded guilty in early 2022 and early 2023. In-flight charters was fined $227,500 and was ordered to pay $40,000 in prosecution costs. But sentencing for everyone else will take place in 2024. White Island, located around 31 miles or 50 kilometers offshore from Wakatane on the east coast of North Island, was a popular tourist destination despite its status as an active volcano. The victims, mostly tourists from Australia, the US, and Malaysia, faced severe injuries from the eruption's searing gas and ash. As a result of this tragedy, tourists are no longer allowed to visit the island, marking a significant change in its accessibility. 5. Eruption in Congo In May 2021, the eastern city of Goma in Congo faced a devastating volcanic eruption from Mount Nirangongo, resulting in at least 32 casualties and significant destruction. The eruption occurred with little warning, turning the sky fiery red and unleashing torrents of lava into villages, destroying over 500 homes. The death toll, initially reported as 22, rose to 32 and was expected to continue increasing as rescue efforts were underway to find missing individuals. Joseph Makundi, head of civil protection for the North Kiyu province, revealed that more than a dozen people died in car accidents while attempting to escape, while others succumbed to the impact of lava hitting their homes. Tragically, some individuals lost their lives from inhaling smoke or toxic gas as they walked across cooling lava. The flow of lava, which was about a half mile, 0.8 kilometers wide, cut off the road between Kibati and Goma, and those attempting to cross were affected. The Volcanic Observatory of Goma's scientific director, Celestin Kasareka Mahinda, highlighted the toxicity of the lava, urging the population to avoid unnecessary travel and steer clear of affected areas. The volcanic eruption prompted a visit from a government delegation, including Congo's health minister, to assess the situation and provide aid. Grief, disbelief, and fear gripped the affected area, emphasizing the immediate need for assistance. Mahinda revealed that the volcano observatory faced challenges in adequately warning the public due to a funding cut. The observatory lacked support from the central government and external donors, leading to the surprising nature of the eruption. Funding cuts, including the end of a partnership with the World Bank in October 2020, left the observatory without internet and hampered its operations. And despite recent funding from the U.S. Geological Survey's Volcano Disaster Assistance Program, the observatory struggled to provide sufficient warnings to local residents. The eruption forced thousands to flee Goma, with around 5,000 seeking refuge in Rwanda and another 25,000 seeking safety in Sake to the northwest. 
UNICEF reported over 170 missing children, organizing transit centers to assist unaccompanied children in the aftermath. Goma had experienced a similar devastating eruption from Mount Nirangongo in 2002, resulting in mass destruction and displacement. The recent eruption highlighted the vulnerability of the region and the need for swift humanitarian responses amid ongoing challenges. 4. Volcanic Tragedy A tragic incident took place in Mexico's El Volcancia National Forest in August 2023, where a 13-year-old boy lost his life after falling 130 feet, or 40 meters, into a volcano. The boy was walking with his family when they realized that he disappeared, and after a frantic search, they were horrified to find him at the bottom of the volcanic crater. Emergency services were immediately contacted, and rescue crews worked tirelessly for about three hours to retrieve the teen's body. Unfortunately, paramedics believe that the boy succumbed to the fall instantly on that fateful Friday. His body was later transferred to the forensic medical service in the city of Jalapa for autopsy. The Volcancio Volcano and Park is a popular destination for thousands of visitors engaging in activities such as hiking, climbing, and rappelling. While the area attracts numerous tourists, the last volcanic activity was reported approximately 900 years ago, according to local media. The tragic event in Mexico follows another incident involving a 13-year-old boy, Wyatt Kaufman, who fell almost 100 feet 30.5 meters into the Grand Canyon. During a trip with his mother to national parks, Wyatt slipped off a cliff near Bright Angel Point Trail while making way for tourists taking photos. The fall resulted in nine broken vertebrae, a collapsed lung, a ruptured spleen, a concussion, and a broken hand. Rescuers faced challenging conditions in the treacherous canyon, taking two hours to reach Wyatt before airlifting him to a hospital in Las Vegas. Wyatt recounted the incident, explaining that he was moving to allow others to take a picture when he lost his grip on a rock and fell backward. The severity of his injuries underscores the dangers associated with such natural attractions and the need for caution, even in seemingly safe areas marked for tourists. 3. Adrenaline Junkie in 2019, Madrid-born paragliding pilot, 36-year-old Horacio Lorenz Fernandez, embarked on an extraordinary adventure, capturing awe-inspiring footage while paragliding over the active Volcán de Fuego in Guatemala. Lorenz Fernandez, an adrenaline junkie with 22 years of paragliding experience, fulfilled a dream by flying around the erupting volcano. The paraglider took off from the top of the nearby inactive Acatenango volcano, intending to enjoy the scenic views. However, his journey turned into an unexpected encounter with the erupting Volcán de Fuego. The footage reveals his breathtaking flight twirling through the sky and capturing a 360-degree view of the landscape and the active volcano. Despite the intense natural spectacle below, Lorenz Fernandez appears remarkably relaxed, even crossing his legs mid-air. Expressing the uniqueness of the experience, he described the power of nature and the indescribable sound of a live volcano erupting. The footage showcases the volcanic activity, with plumes of ash spewing from the volcanic vents, creating a surreal backdrop for the paraglider's adventure. Lorenz Fernandez, who began paragliding at the age of 14, emphasized his lifelong dedication to flying and continuous learning in the sport. Flying, for him, is an infinite and unique experience. And flying around Volcán de Fuego was a dream come true. The paragliding feat occurred after the Volcano of Fire, Volcán de Fuego, erupted in June 2019, causing significant devastation. The eruption claimed 194 lives, with 234 individuals reported missing. Villagers in the surrounding areas had to evacuate hastily as superheated debris flowed down the mountain. The eruption left a grim scene, with bodies covered in ash resembling statues. 
emphasizing the dangers and unpredictability of volcanic activity in the region. Despite the challenges, though, Lorenz Fernandez's paragliding adventure stands as a testament to the beauty that's offered by Mother Nature. 2. Two Birds, One Stone During a photography expedition to Kamchatka, Far East Russia, a man who goes by Tomas VDW online, an avid photographer, had the unique opportunity to capture the spectacle of an erupting volcano. Tomas joined a group of fellow photographers, led by the highly skilled Daniel Cordan. After learning about visible lava streams in the area, the group embarked on a challenging journey, traversing the rugged terrain in a six-wheel drive Russian Kamaz truck. Their destination was a small lake higher up in the mountain, where they set up camp approximately an hour away. This vantage point offered the perfect opportunity to capture the erupting volcano with a stunning reflection in the lake as a foreground. The conditions proved favorable, and the photographers seized the moment to capture the mesmerizing scenes of glowing lava illuminating the night. And on the second night of shooting, Tomas decided to switch from a wide-angle lens to a 35mm lens, allowing for a more detailed image of the volcano and lava. Then, in a stroke of luck, during a series of 15-second exposures, a bright streak lit up the sky for a split second. Surprisingly, it was a meteor. Tomas, realizing the rarity of the event, felt incredibly fortunate to have captured this once-in-a-lifetime occurrence. The meteor aligned perfectly over the erupting stratovolcano, Kluchevskaya Sopka, creating a captivating scene that Tomas aptly named Volcano Magic. The photograph, a crop that provides a closer look at the lava and meteor streaks, encapsulates the awe-inspiring forces of nature witnessed during this expedition. And now for number one. But if you want to hear more bizarre and crazy stories, stay tuned after the video for some more content. 1. Farewell in December 2022, a harrowing incident unfolded on Chile's Lascar volcano as a mountain guide led a group of tourists, including a mother and child, on a hike along the 18,000-foot, 5,486-meter peak. The guide, whose name remains undisclosed, found himself at the edge of the crater when the volcano unexpectedly erupted spewing a massive column of ash into the sky. Fearing for his life, the mountain guide recorded a heartfelt farewell video to his family while frantically running down the slope, expressing love for his family, including a shout out to his brother Andre. He urgently conveyed the need to descend as quickly as possible. Speaking later about the incident with news outlets, the 51-year-old guide revealed that he'd climbed the volcano around 700 times and possessed 17 years of experience as a guide. The eruption caught the group off guard, however, with one of the tourists inquiring about a peculiar noise, only to discover it was the ominous sound of the volcanic explosion. The guide recounted the tense situation, noting that the mother and child were visibly frightened, while the other two French tourists remained more calm. Despite the perilous circumstances, the group managed to descend the mountain to safety within approximately 40 minutes, with no injuries reported. Reflecting on the experience, the seasoned guide emphasized the role of his 17 years of expertise, stating, I am 51 years old. I've been working for 17 years as a mountain guide. The experience helped me. It was incredible, a blessing. He expressed his deep connection to the breathtaking location, mentioning his weekly visits to the beautiful site. Authorities responded to the eruption by upgrading the alert status from green to yellow. The National Geology and Mining Service, along with a National Emergency Office of the Ministry of the Interior, declared an emergency following an earthquake associated with the fluid dynamics inside the volcanic system. Plans were announced to disseminate safety measures to residents and tourists, recognizing the periodic emissions from the Lascar volcano that pose potential risks to the surrounding area. Hey guys, it's Chris. From the guy bitten by a shark on his Australian vacation to the lucky family 
who narrowly escaped death when a Miami condo crumbled to pieces. Here are 10 times that vacations ended in disaster. Number 10. Angry Shark Where do you think the most common place for sharks to attack in the world is? It's actually New Smyrna Beach in Florida, but a very close second is Australia. But are you really surprised by this? A total of 642 shark attacks have killed more than 155 people in the Down Under since the year 1580. So in Australia, one of the very unlucky tourists met his ultimate fate at the hands, or should I say teeth, of one very angry shark. It happened at a popular spot known as Cable Beach in the northwest coast, a place famous for visiting tourists. Police were called early in the morning after a man was pulled out of the water with grave injuries. He was bleeding all over the sand. But before anyone could even ask the bleeding tourist what had happened, he sputtered and died. Medical attention was given at the scene, but he just couldn't get over the devastating injuries delivered by that powerful shark. It basically tore him apart. And even though the authorities claim shark attacks are rare, this tourist's death was the eighth fatal shark attack in Australia just that year. During the same time, there were 22 shark maulings that didn't prove fatal. In any case, this guy went to Australia to enjoy their beautiful beaches and big waves, and he left in a body bag. Number 9. Bungee Jumping Horror A British woman went to Spain for a fun vacation. She was an adventurous, spirited 23-year-old girl, wanting to enjoy all the country had to offer. She was traveling with her aunt, and they were both adrenaline junkies and looking to have some fun. While her aunt was in for quite an unforgettable trip, they decided it would be more memorable to go bungee jumping. Neither of them had ever done it before, but it was on both of their bucket lists. Tragically, the aunt ended up watching helplessly as her niece died during a tragic bungee jumping accident. It happened at about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. According to the New York Daily News, Cleo Diabro jumped from a stone bridge attached to a bungee cord and then smashed her head off that same bridge as she went down. Her aunt screamed in horror and looked over the railing in fear as her niece dangled dead at the end of the cord. It was a gruesome sight. But how did such a terrifying thing even happen? The authorities say there must have been a miscalculation with the rope that caused her to hit her head off the bridge so hard that she died. Unfortunately for her aunt, the memory will haunt her for the rest of her life. Number 8. The Miami Collapse Near the end of June in 2021, an apartment building in Miami collapsed without warning. At the time, a family of four happened to be renting out a vacation condo, and they were inside that condo when the condominium collapsed. And according to the family, it was a miracle they didn't all die. As of right this very second, four people have been confirmed dead, and there are still 159 missing. The tragedy came when the Champlain Towers collapsed out of nowhere at 1.30 a.m. The family on vacation watched in terror as the condominium split in half right before their very eyes. They watched the condominium building crumble, though the room they were renting was left standing. They survived and didn't suffer any injuries, though they are undoubtedly traumatized for life. The family was so close to dying that they could literally stand at the edge of the open apartment where the rest of the building had collapsed, and they could look down at the heap of rubble in disbelief. Number 7. Angry Crocodile just recently in 2021, identical twin sisters from the UK ran into some trouble while backpacking around Mexico. Sisters Georgia and Melissa Lori were in the port town of Porto Escondido in the state of Oaxaca. One night, they decided it would be a fun idea to go swimming in a local lagoon. Unbeknownst to the tourists, the lagoon was filled with hungry crocodiles. Melissa was the victim of a savage crocodile attack. It came at her from nowhere, and neither of the girls had seen the beast coming. But luckily, Georgia came to her sister's defense. She claims that it was because of her water rescue training that she was able to remain calm and fight the crocodile off her sister as it tried ripping her to pieces. Georgia repeatedly punched the crocodile, forcing it to let her sister go. And even when it came back to attack again, Georgia punched it straight in the face in a classic Chuck Norris move. The crocodile then gave up and ran away. Melissa was taken to the hospital in very delicate condition. She had suffered a wrist fracture, lacerations of an organ, internal bleeding, and flooded lungs. She was put into a medically induced coma while doctors struggled to drain the excess fluid in her body and help her to breathe without being on a machine. Hopefully, Melissa makes a full recovery. Would you be brave enough to take on a hungry crocodile to save your sibling? Let us know in the comments section down below. And if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 6. Vanished into Thin Air Sarm Heslop has been missing as of the time this video was made for about four months. She was last seen on March 7th with her American boyfriend at a bar in the U.S. Virgin Islands. 
Sarm went to the islands for a fun vacation, traveling all the way from the UK. Nobody knows where she went, what's become of her, or if she'll ever be seen again. Her friends don't believe she would just run away or have gone into hiding, but there's been absolutely no news or breaks in this case. So here's what we do know. Sarm is described as an athletic Caucasian woman standing 5 feet 8 inches tall, with long brown hair and a tattoo on her shoulder of a seahorse, flower, and a butterfly. She left the bar with her boyfriend at 10 o'clock in the evening. At 2.30 a.m., her boyfriend called the police and reported her as missing. He claimed that she never made it back to his catamaran, and yet she left the bar with him. This has put the boyfriend in a seriously hot spot, especially because he waited another 10 hours before reaching out to the U.S. Coast Guard to report that she may have fallen into the water. He hasn't officially been named as a suspect, but he immediately hired a powerful lawyer, and he wouldn't let the police near his boat to search it. It looks like Sarm met the wrong rich guy, and sometime between 10 and 2.30 he disposed of her body. Number 5. Burned in Mexico Dean Lucas and Adam Coleman were two Australian surfers driving from Canada through the United States and into Mexico on an unforgettable trip of a lifetime. They had a classic van and were driving across North America, hitting some big waves. Everything was going just great until they drove across the border into Mexico. The tourists then went missing and their van was discovered burnt to a crisp. Before their van was set on fire, the duo had been hanging out on the Baja California Peninsula. They took the ferry into the state of Sinaloa on their way to Guadalajara. But before they could ever reach the city, they were intercepted by a gang of criminals, who then shot Adam Coleman in the face, butchered Dean Lucas, stole their vehicle, and ditched it somewhere and set it on fire. Thousands of dollars were raised online to help the surfers' families travel to the country to recover their bodies. Sinaloa is home to the powerful Sinaloa drug cartel, led by fugitive drug kingpin Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. While tens of thousands of Mexicans have been killed, and over 26,000 have gone missing in the last 10 years of drug violence, violent attacks on foreign tourists are less common. Three suspects have been arrested in connection to this crime. They were discovered with fake police uniforms that they had been wearing to commit highway robberies, especially on foreign tourists. After the bodies were discovered, they were handed over to the Australian consulate and were due to be sent back to their home country. Number 4. Attack of the Anteater On a Disney cruise vacation, a young boy was attacked by an anteater. Yes, you heard that right. The boy and his mother were on vacation aboard the Disney Wonder when the vessel stopped in Colombia. Obviously, the child's mother had no idea what to expect in this beautiful coastal city, and when she took her kid to the National Aviary, she let the boy get a little too close to an anteater which she claimed was not properly sequestered from visitors. Sequestered or not, you probably just shouldn't let your kid run up to a wild animal. Animals are extremely unpredictable. The anteater lashed out with its huge claws and mauled the child, though the injuries were not too severe. Then back on board the Disney cruise, the mother was hysterical. After the incident, she went full Karen mode and claimed that the cruise ship didn't give her son the proper medical care that he deserved, and has since filed a big lawsuit. Documents show the kid did actually receive medical care once he got back on board the ship, but it was not enough to keep him from contracting a severe mycobacterial infection from the animal. Attorneys claim the boy wasn't properly diagnosed or treated on board the cruise and didn't receive the care he needed. The result of the lawsuit was never revealed. They probably settled it real quietly. And the fate of the anteater is still unknown, though it probably is still attacking children who get too close to its habitat. Number 3. Brutality in the Dominican Republic A woman from the U.S. had a pretty miserable vacation in the Dominican Republic after she was brutally strangled and beaten, dragged down concrete stairs, and then beaten some more. According to NBC News, Tammy Lawrence Daly from Delaware was staying at the majestic Elegance Punta Cana when, one of the nights there, she was jumped from behind. She had been on her way to the beach when an unknown attacker grabbed her from the rear and dragged her into a maintenance room, where he then assaulted her for eight straight hours. It was absolutely brutal. Inside the storage closet, Tammy was strangled multiple times until she fell unconscious. She was kicked in the head and beaten with a club. In the end, her unknown attacker left her bruised and swollen for staff at the hotel to find the next morning. As tragic and horrifying as this was, nobody was ever even captured for the crime. And to make things even worse for visitors, it was reported that 10 tourists died visiting the Dominican Republic that same year, while others, especially women, have reported being brutally beaten and assaulted in the country. So yeah, ladies, watch out if you go to the Dominican Republic. Stay safe. Number 2. The Worst Return This story didn't happen on vacation, but it did happen right after one. 
A man from Corpus Christi, Texas arrived home from vacation to find something gruesome waiting for him. His name has not been given out of privacy concerns, but according to the local police, he arrived home to his apartment building to find an unknown dead woman lying in his bed. The guy had been gone on holiday for several weeks. He didn't recognize the dead woman, and he didn't know how she could have gotten into his house in the first place. He immediately ran out of the apartment and called 911. Officers arrived to investigate, but have been pretty hush-hush about what exactly happened. It looks like a squatter may have moved into the Texas man's house while he was on vacation and committed a bit of casual murder, leaving the evidence behind on his bed. Number 1. Before They Arrived In Otsego County, Michigan, two sisters were killed on their way to the airport for a family vacation. This is extremely tragic for a number of reasons, not the least of which being that they never even made it to the vacation. Their lives ended in tragedy on Interstate 75 when they were killed in a brutal car accident. According to state police, the accident occurred at just after 2.30 in the afternoon. A 21-year-old woman was driving a Mercury Montego in the southbound lane and swerved to avoid a collision, but she crossed the median, flew into northbound traffic, and was struck by a Toyota Prius. Inside the Toyota were the two sisters, aged 22 and 19. They were simply heading north for a little family getaway and unfortunately for them and their family, they were pronounced dead at the scene. And here's where things get even more tragic. Their father was driving in the car behind them. They were all headed out on vacation together, taking separate vehicles to the airport. He watched helplessly as the car his daughters were in got ripped to shreds, and he could do nothing as rescue workers pulled their mangled corpses out of the ruined vehicle. Would you rather hike to the very top of an inactive volcano or paraglide over an active volcano if you knew you'd be safe. Let us know what you would choose in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and we hope to see you in the next one. Bye for now.